This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening guys? It's time for another classic circuits you should know. And this is one of my favorite all-time simple little circuits. It is a 555 timer-based PWM driver. If you don't know what PWM is, it is pulse width modulation. And basically what we are doing is we are chopping up the voltage to trick whatever we are trying to control the voltage of to think that the non-changing voltage that we're giving it is a different voltage. I'll explain it better here in a minute, and you'll be able to see it better with the demonstration. But let's talk about the circuit here for a second. So at the heart of it is the 555 timer. We have, of course, our VCC pin and our reset pin held high. If you don't hold the reset pin high, the chip lives in reset and it won't do anything. Just keep that in mind. You can always put a switch on there to hold it in reset, but we don't need it for that. Our ground and our control voltage pins both go to ground. I have a uh, 0 0.01 microfarad cap on the control voltage pin. You can get away with leaving this pin floating, but, you know, if you want to do things right, this is how you set it up. Our output pin goes over to a MOSFET, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, here is where the things get a little bit interesting in making this a wonderful PWM driver. All right, our trigger and our threshold, trigger and threshold, of course, are looped together. If you don't do that, you don't get an oscillator. It just triggers one time. You need your threshold and trigger looped together in order to get that. Now, over here where we have our discharge pin and our trigger pin, you see we set up a little network here with two diodes and two resistors. What this does is it allows us to use this variable resistor right here to change the on and off percentages, what's known as duty cycle. So the longer we leave a signal on, the, the higher the voltage is perceived to be. The shorter amount of time that we leave the voltage on, or leave the signal on, the lower the voltage is perceived to be. And you'll be able to see it more clearly on the oscilloscope. So, we have our thing oscillating now at a steady frequency, and we adjust the duty cycle here using this little diode network. It keeps things, you know, from it keeps the frequency from changing as we get a, a backwards discharge there. Now, on our output pin over here, we have an IRFC 44N uh, standard N channel MOSFET. I've got a 5K pull down resistor on it here. And then we have our load here, so we're doing some low side switching. Now, what's nice about this circuit, <clears throat> and what makes it uh, very useful, is the voltages involved here. A 555 timer can run up to 16 volts, down to as low as probably about 4 volts. So, you know, you've got a 12 volt range that you can, you know, we can't see that, that you can run that 555 timer on. But your max voltage is 16 volts, so let's just keep in mind our max voltage is... Our MOSFET max voltage is 55 volts, and our 1N4148 switching diodes, it's not really max voltage, but 100 volts. So, all that being said, you can easily control motors from a simple, you know, little 3-volt motor up to a 24-volt motor, you know, making it pretty very, pretty very useful. That's, that's a heck of a description there, Paul. Pretty very useful. So, let me hook this up, and what I want to do is I want to attach the meter here. I've attached the positive to this uh, anode on this little red LED, and the ground is attached there to the ground. I'm going to bring the meter up here. I'm going to energize the circuit. You see the LED is on. Now I'm going to roll you up here to the meter. Stay there. There we go. There's some light going there. So we are at 4 volts. 
And as I rotate this potentiometer here, R1, you can see our voltage is going down. But it's truly not. The voltage coming out of the 555 timer is never changing. I can make this a little bit more clear for you. I hope. By attaching, instead of the meter in this case, a oscilloscope. This will make it easier for you to understand, I hope. Okay. Let me bring the uh, oscilloscope down here. You guys will be able to see a little bit better what we got going on here. Okay, now I think we got everything in the frame. So, here is the output of that 555 timer. And as I adjust the potentiometer, you know, there's our zero line. Everything stays right about the zero line. The only thing we're changing is the difference between the on time, which is the high part up here, and the off time. So if I go like this, it's almost completely off. But if I go like this, it is almost completely on. And it is only off for those very little bits right there. But that is enough to basically trick our other components into thinking it is a lower voltage because it's getting pulses of the voltage. All right? Are you with me so far? Good. So you say that's all well and good, but what does it do? Well, like I said, it's incredibly useful for controlling things like electric motors. I mean, it's good for controlling lights too, but it really excels in controlling electric motors. So here's one of these little, you know, goofy electric motors that you get in a Arduino and Raspberry Pi kit. Okay, we're energized. There we are at max speed. And then we can slow it way down. Now, as far as the motor knows, it is right now receiving an incredibly low voltage. So low, it just stalled. Yeah, turn it back up. But it is not. It is receiving that same output, which in this case is around 5 volts or so. It's being switched on and off very quickly through that MOSFET. And it allows us to control the motor. See how simple that is? Let's put the uh, let's put the scope on here, and we can have a look at the waveform. Now you remember how nice and square it looked before? Well, it ain't going to be so pretty now. There's our waveform this time. Let me uh, arrange that. There we go. So there's our waveform. Almost fully on there. And almost fully off there. So obviously you've noticed the change in our beautiful waveform with that electric motor. Those are called inductive spikes. You can fight that with a couple tricks using diodes and whatnot, but that's not covered in the scope of what we're talking about here today. So guys, that is the very simple and very cool 555 timer based PWM driver. Now, what if you wanted to drive a motor that was greater than the 16 volt max VCC 
that the 555 timer can handle. Well, in a case like that, what you could do, there, there are a couple things you could do. You could put in a voltage regulator, you know, right, right in here. But the, really the simplest thing to do, say you need 24 volts, just do a voltage divider off VCC. And bring that into here. I'd have to do the calculations, but you know, something like a, maybe a couple of 470 ohm. And that is going to get you a nice 12 volts on that line easily allow you to drive 24 volt motors because the MOSFET doesn't care the MOSFET will take up to 55 volts the uh, the diodes don't care they'll take up to 100 volts so you always have to look at whatever your weakest link is and that is going to be your ceiling so plan for it adjust for it and have fun controlling motors with a 555 timer that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.